the Diamond Jubilee Challenge Cup. This is Godolphin and Latimer. Against Nala Vili. Just about ready to go. Afternoon, Sean. Good afternoon. How are you today, Tim? I'm enjoying it. It's hotting up, isn't it? <laughs> well, we would say heating up, but that's fair enough. The uh, regatta is uh, getting to the business end, isn't it, as we head into the weekend. Some top quality racing out on the water this afternoon. Absolutely. Races are getting much closer than the last several days. Noticeably. See uh, Molly Johnson slapping her thighs and trying to make sure she's uh, as alert and ready to go as possible. I will start you like this. All these athletes desperate to stay in the competition through the weekend. Get ready, please. It's a minor triumph, isn't it? If you're still in it on Saturday morning, you, you always want up. to make the weekend. Yeah, big benchmark, isn't it? Like a golfer, you don't want to miss the cut going into the weekend. When you get this close. Attention! Go! So on the Barcher station, Godolphin and Latimer in the black and red. Stroke. Yeah, rate really high there. Immediately. A glance over the shoulder from Claire Patterson, checking on the steering. Steering such a key part, especially at this stage of the race past Temple Island. You can see there Kate Lister in the two seat. Instructions, chatting it through. And uh, they might need to have a bit more talk, the Isle of Ely, because they're heading out towards the middle of the river. Umpire getting busy there with Godolphin and Latimer, who have come to central as well. Both boats needing to redirect themselves well, there's over. There's just been a huge crab. Massive crab in that boat. Unfortunately, in the Godolphin boat. Godolphin and Latimer. And they uh, looked like it was the uh, two-seat India Colgrave who had the problem. And that now she needs to recompose because it's early on in the race and you saw the uh, catching a crab that uh, will really have disrupted not just the momentum of the boat but mentally. Yes, but this crew, the Godolphin, has not rowed a quad until last week. Let's have a look at the... Uh, there you are, yeah, there the two are. seats. India Colgrave, as I mentioned, having a big problem trying to get the oar, the blade out of the water. And there's such momentum of over a thousand pounds pressure going forward it's hard to get the oar out but just last week these girls were rowing in a cox four and they've only been one week in the quad and it's a difficult change from one oar to two oars it's a whole different sport really, isn't it playing rugby league and then playing rugby union or, you know, it's a huge it, shift, even, even it? worse and in a quad it's such a small confined space and so much moving with four bodies eight oars I was saying yesterday, it's like juggling snakes. <laughs> you just don't know what's going on. You have to concentrate and let your muscle memory control what's happening. And add a little bump in the water, and it's deadly. But these are good racers in Gandolphin. They won the national schools, the school's head. They just lost in the finals at Henley Women's a few weeks ago. But they're very good racers. Well, they're going to need to show that, aren't they, in this next uh, few minutes, because that'll have really upset their equilibrium so early in the race. They need to settle down as quickly as they can. Well, they seem to be back rowing very well now. Now they'll probably change their race plan in Godolphin and try to make a move midway once they recompose themselves. Settle down, get the rhythm, and then try a push. Who makes that call, Jim? Is it going to be uh, something to look uh, there, Sean? I mean, it, you're um, experienced enough to... Is it possible to tell who's going to make the call in that boat of the four of them? Sean? Usually it's the bow or the two-person that makes the call. The stroke no one will hear in the bow. And that's not something you usually plan for, catching a huge boat-stopping crab. No. Was the uh, what if planning may not go that far. You don't plan for disaster. And unfortunately for them, the Isle of Ely has been rowing so smooth all week. Earlier yesterday, when you had the front bow shot, it looked like a single sculler. They were so well synchronized. And you can see now from the overhead shot, they get tremendous reach and just use their legs to lever the boat by them. And now they can take the center of the course, 
to not worry about the booms and just relax and watch. Yeah, they've got Godolphin and Natsuma very firmly in their sights, haven't they? They can uh, read this race all the way to the end, just uh, pace themselves, manage the race exactly as they wish. And, you know, it's a good, it's a good crew. They're a second in the national schools. For two of the girls, it's their first uh, Henley race. So they have to be feeling very comfortable now. By being on the third day, four lengths open, they can relax. I won't say enjoy the rest of the race, but they can compose themselves for tomorrow. Helena O'Donnell, Kate Lister, Rebecca Welch, and Molly Johnson in the boat there. And a brilliant Henley women's regatta, defeating Henley in the semi-finals of junior quads before losing out to Gloucester. Silver medalist in the championship girls double at the national schools regatta. And there are crew on the rise. They look very uh, serene at this stage, don't they? Yes, well, 28 strokes a minute, they can get their breath back, relax, and watch their competition. That's what's nice about match racing is that you're allowed to relax if you have a good start or you nice. take advantage well keep an eye on the an accident uh, yeah the uh, godolphin and Natsuma boat who have tried to get their fluency uh, back trying to regain their composure and just uh, straight out into the middle of the water not that's going to bother anybody because they're a long way back it's just to their own uh, disadvantage really isn't it it's yes considering they were racing Cox 4s, and there is no Cox 4 event in Henley, they've done a fantastic job by making it to Friday. Now they're juggling snakes, it's more difficult. <laughs> Someone said. We'll see. But I'm sure Godolphin will put in a very fine sprint here at the end. Yeah, finish with a flourish. So moving in front of the grandstands and stewards. Conditions are perfect for the rows today. Absolutely. So Temperature nice. wise, no wind really to talk of. Sun in and out, nice cloud cover. Now ILV Ely is just putting on a nice sculling school for the enclosures. Yeah, they can row for the cameras now, can't they? Thanks. Yes, sure they can. They, uh, they know that the coach will be watching this over and over again, so they'll think, well, we better nail our technique. Yes. Now, they'll probably put on a little push the Isle of Ely just to get ready for tomorrow. You don't want to finish your race at 28 strokes a minute. You want to finish so you have the muscle memory because their next race will be, again, straight out of the blocks. All hell will break loose. Yeah, so there's a danger you can, although win so convincingly, learn bad habits during that. I mean, yes. you, you become a bit uh, sedate in the way yes. you approach these races. So, yeah, finish with a bit of sharp. Yes, you want your legs to be, to be really pressing. So that's the last feeling you have today and the first feeling you'll have tomorrow. Well, they're not doing that at the moment, Sean. No, they're not. They're putting on a very nice sculling score. So if you were their coach, you'd have a word afterwards, would you? Say that, we wouldn't. I don't think I've ever coached a crew that rose that well. <laughs> sure, I think it's... But uh, they haven't done anything to sharpen at the finish. They just ease across the line in the Diamond Jubilee Challenge Cup, the Isle of Ely. The Dolphin and Latin with that early problem on board catching a crowd and that will be a moment they'll quickly want to forget. Heads up. 